I really hate to say this, but I think America has finally gone tyrannical against its own citizens. Yesterday, Proud Boys leader Enrique Torrio was sentenced to a whopping 22 years in prison for his part in the January 6th protest. In a trial that started out with leaked chat logs from an FBI special agent that showed she had been ordered by her boss to destroy evidence. And yes, I'm calling it a protest because if you go back and look at media reports of every left-wing Democrat riot over the last 10 years, what you're going to find is that no matter how violent they get, it's always called a protest. Mobs of Democrats violently attack innocent people at a Trump event in San Jose while carrying Mexican flags, and they're still called protesters. Mobs of Democrat voting communists launch a full-scale attack against police protecting a statue, and somehow it's still called a protest. Calls for violence from prominent BLM leaders and the ensuing rallies that lead to actual riots, destroyed neighborhoods, towns, businesses, and dead ambushes against cops and innocent people. Protesters! They can threaten Supreme Court judges at their homes before they make a major ruling that results in an attempted assassination of three judges. And yet, they are still called protesters. Attack the White House with the goal of taking Trump out of it that results in Trump being rushed to a bunker, around 60 injured Secret Service agents, and a historic church that was set on fire. All charges dropped, and they're still called protesters. So as far as I'm concerned, January 6th was a protest, especially since out of 120,000 people, only around 300 actually fought with riot police, which is a drop in the bucket for the Democrat mobs. So I'm gonna do my best as a stay-at-home dad with four kids and very little free time to break down what I think about this insane sentence. So stick around and check it out. Real quick, I wanna let you all know about a friend of mine, someone many of you know as Let's Be Frank from YouTube, who's in need of help after Hurricane Adelia nearly wiped out his home that he shares with his wife and children. It's not a total loss and the house can be repaired, but they don't have insurance and need any help they can get. I know you're all a very giving audience, and so I'm gonna share a link to his Give, Send, Go campaign that was started by Sarah Kane, the Crusader gal. If you can help, please do. Thank you. Okay, so for a moment, let's just set aside all the suspicious crap around January 6th, like Ray Epps, the lack of security, and the fat Capitol Police just let people in. What exactly did Enrique do to justify a 22-year sentence? According to NPR, he got 22 years, which is more than rapists and murderers sometimes get, for, quote, conspiring to stop the certification of the 2020 presidential election results in Congress. Tario was also convicted for obstructing an official proceeding, conspiracy to prevent an officer from discharging their duties, and obstruction of law enforcement during a civil disorder and destruction of government property with a value over $1,000. That first one sounds very nefarious, but I could say the exact same thing about Democrats in the year 2000 and again in 2004. In 2000, Democrats hatched schemes to stop the certification of Florida Florida, and then Ohio in 2004. These efforts failed, but if simply conspiring to stop the certification process is worth 22 years, then it seems like the Democrats have some explaining to do. The second list of charges there all sound like things that happen at every single Democrat protest. Democrats stop official government proceedings all the time, like when they tried to stop the certification of Brett Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court, or the numerous theatric stunts they've carried out in Tennessee recently. It was a storming of the Capitol on the state level. They shouted at lawmakers who were going about their business in the building. Oh, that was different. Preventing police from carrying out their duties? Again, classic Democrat, left-wing, BLM, and Antifa stuff that went on for years and with all the charges dropped. Destruction of government property? Do I even need to? And oh, by the way, almost none of those cases are being prosecuted. But wait a minute, was Enrique even there? I'm actually not sure about that. I've tried to find out, but I know that he had been banned from DC for the high crime of burning a BLM flag, albeit someone else's property. But come on, I've been told my entire life that the most American thing you can do is burn a flag. But as usual, that standard only applies to them. Not you, not me, and not Enrique. What makes this con conviction and sentence even more alarming is that there's apparently no evidence for any of it. 
What? Number one, there was no plan to storm the Capitol. Two, there was no plan to stop the certification. And three, one of them was in prison in a different city at the time. Apparently, this conviction is based on something called an unspoken plan. According to the New York Times, in a series of searches before the trial began, investigators collected more than a half a million text messages from the Ministry of Self-Defense and other Proud Boy group chats. While some of the messages were overtly violent and hinted at action at the Capitol, none set forth an explicit plan to storm the building or to forcibly disrupt the election certification taking place inside. What? Even if there were no explicit orders to attack the Capitol that day, he said, members of the group believed there was an implicit agreement to band together and to take lead in waging an all-out revolution to stop Mr. Biden from entering the White House. Judge Kelly's ruling allowed prosecutors to introduce damning evidence about the violent behavior and aggressive language of members of the Proud Boys who had only limited connections to the five defendants? What? What did I just read? You're telling me that these people were convicted and given up to 22 years based on the assumptions and testimony of people who the court even admits had limited connections to the five defendants. It goes on. The rulings also permitted jurors to convict on conspiracy even if they found there was no plan to disrupt the certification of the election. All of these guys are being convicted and sentenced up to 22 years for what amounts to rioting because there's literally no evidence of plans outside of that, which again blows my mind considering that Ray Epps is on video for multiple days and nights telling people to enter the Capitol and is even on video at the forefront of the protests when those riots started yet was never charged and was presented as a victim by the media the very same media that was integral in creating the false insurrection narrative that from the very beginning was built on lies but you don't even have to take it from me just listen to Nancy Pelosi's daughter who was caught on video admitting what is very plain for everybody to see considering that the shaman who did not I mean, what did the shaman do? He stood there. Right. What did Paul do? He stood there. The shaman got how many votes? Right. 41. Yeah. Compared to eight. So if I, when I saw that, I was like, and I think that the government is going to go for more, that they're going to look to get bigger. Like people are criticizing some of the. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and let us all know what you think about this in the comment section. I'll see you all in the next one.